in this video, we're going to see the following. We're going to see what is Podman, how is it different from Docker. Then we are going to install Podman in a Linux machine. We're going to see how to run containers inside Podman. And finally, we are going to run a Docker image from GitHub package registry, which I had uploaded last year to show how compatible Podman is with an image which was built by Docker. Feel free to jump into any of these timelines. I will leave the links for these timestamps in the description below. With that, let's get started. So what is Podman? The full form of Podman is Pod Manager Tool. And that's why the name Podman. The name Pods came from Kubernetes. If you have worked with Kubernetes, you know that collection of containers or grouping of containers are called as pods. The main reason for creating Podman is two. One, leveraging the concept of pods where you can have two containers run together. Mostly we call them as sidecar patterns. So we can use Podman to run two different containers together. And also the major reason why people created Podman is because of the daemonless container engine. If you have used Docker, you know that you need to install Docker container engine and also you need to run this Docker engine as a daemon process, which you will be running as a root instance. Most of the time, you don't get permission to install or run some softwares as root. Podman solves that particular problem by creating daemonless container engine. In the sense, you don't need to run any process in the backend in order to run or create or build any image. All the images which Podman creates and runs needs to be OCI compatible. OCI is Open Container in Interface, which is a common initiative for creating container images, which can be built and run across different container platforms. So in this case, I'm going to show in the end of the video by running a Docker image, which I had built long back. If you know my GitHub link, if you go to github.com slash techprimers, there is this packages option here. I have my containers built in uh, October 2019. I built it using Docker and I had uploaded these images inside my GitHub container registry. Similar to how we have Docker registry or uh, Elastic container registry or Azure container registry, we have GitHub registry as well. I have uploaded here and I'm going to use this particular image inside a Linux machine and I'm going to run it using Podman. In order to get Podman installed, I need a Linux machine. I have a Mac OS operating system and Podman is not compatible in it unless or until I install a virtual box, something like a VM and then use Linux image in that. In order to use Linux machine, I'm going to use AWS EC2 instance. So this is my console. I have a free, uh, free tire account. In fact, I can, if you see, I created an instance some time ago and then I terminated it when I was trying to demo whatever I'm going to show now. So I'm going to create a new EC2 instance. If you already have a Linux laptop, you can try the same steps, whatever I'm doing. But if you don't have a Linux machine, then you can leverage AWS's free tire and then create an EC2 instance temporarily. For this particular demo, I'm going to use the RHEL um, Linux 8 version. Since Podman is created or contributed by Red Hat, I'm going to use the same Linux um, just to be using their software. I'm just going to say add storage, nothing. I'm just going to leave everything as default. For the security group, I'm just going to select an existing security group, which I used because I have my IP address configured so that I can use it to connect to the EC2 instance. I'm going to give the existing key pair, which I already have. I have the password for it. So I'm just going to use that. So now my EC2 instance uh, will be launched. It's, it's pending right now. Meanwhile, let me show my terminal. So inside the terminal, I have the certificate file, uh, which I'm going to use to log into this EC2 instance. So I'm just waiting for this EC2 instance to come up. So it's running now. I can do a connect from my machine. So I'm going to connect my terminal from my local laptop and log in into the EC2 instance in Amazon. So the machine is still rebooting, I guess. Let me refresh. So it's still initializing. Let's give it a minute and then I'll log into the machine. So it looks like my EC2 instance is up because I can see a public IP address assigned. Um, let me go and connect. Yeah, so I'm getting the login. So yeah, so notice that I am logged into the EC2 instance just to confirm it. I can just say uname hyphen A. This shows what version of Linux I have. Um, so all are good. 
and I'm also in the user called ec2-user. So ec2-user doesn't have full root privileges. In order to flip and install my Podman, by default Podman obviously I cannot install from my ec2 instance user. I need to switch it into root. So I'll just say sudo root. I'll say sudo su and it will be flipping it to root. And uh, there are some installation steps for the Podman. So let me copy the Linux um, steps and let me paste it here. So I'll paste it in a scripts called install.sh. Let me paste this here and I'll just save it. chmod plus x install.sh. And I'm just going to install it. So this install is going to run some bunch of commands, which I took it from the installation page. So you can choose whatever installation step based on the type of machine you have. So right now here I have the Red Hat Linux 8 version. So it's going to install based on the version of OS I have. So it's just downloading those specific plugins and things like that. So the installation is complete. In order to verify if um, we are able to check Podman, I can do a Podman and version. So the moment I give Podman version, this shows what version of the CLI I'm using. You can also do Podman info, which will give some information about the Podman, the registries which it has. For example, here, if you, if you see here, there is a registry tab, it shows what registries this particular Podman CLI is connected to. So we will need to connect to GitHub container registry. So I will have to change this. I'll show that in a minute, but um, looks like we have Podman ready so in order to check the compatibility instead of running podman a lot of people rename podman alias to docker because whatever commands docker supports podman supports that as well for example podman ps lists will be listing all the processes which are running or the containers which are running so if you see that you can list it the other good thing about podman is you can run podman as a non-root user so i'm going to show that uh, by exiting from the root user and i'm right now in the ec2 user if I run Podman PS, I will still be able to run and then list containers and things like that. Now I can do Podman images. Podman images is similar to Docker images. This will show what are the local images which are available in this machine. Right now there is nothing. So Podman PS is similar to Docker PS. Podman images is similar to Docker images. You can also do Podman build, Podman run, everything which Docker supports. So to verify that, I'm just going to run a default or a um, image which is present in the documentation here. So I'm going to run or pull an image, for example, this particular image, which is a Fedora projects image. So I'm just going to pull this particular image and I'm going to show you by running that particular image as a container. So this is similar to Docker pull. So we generally do Docker pull and then the URL or the path of the image. So here we are doing podman pull so which is exactly similar to docker pull so the image is present here so we can verify this using docker images podman images you can see that the image is now cached earlier there was nothing here now we have the fedora httpd image this is nothing but a sample http server which is going to run inside a container now in order to run this particular image there is a command for it we are going to run this particular container as a daemon container and that's why it is hyphen dt. So we can just run this. Similar to how we do docker run, we can do a podman run. Since we are running it as a daemon, it's not showing anything. In order to uh, get logs, you can do podman logs and you can give the container ID. Here I'm going to say latest, uh, uh, give me the latest container log. So you can see that this is the logs of the container which we ran. Now to see if the container is running, Generally what we do, we do docker ps. In this case, I'm going to do podman ps. See that the container ID is running now. It started 26 seconds ago. So in order to kill this container, you can just do a podman kill and then give the container ID. But I want to verify if this is running. So I'll just say curl and then do a HTTP. So whatever commands I'm running, all these are present inside the documentation. So you can take a look at it from there as well. So see that um, it is successful. I got the successful message. Now I'm going to kill this particular container. So I'll just say podman kill and then container ID. So this is how you, we can run a podman container similar to how we run Docker containers.
Now the next step is to run an existing image which I already built and use Podman to pull it and then run it. So if I click on the containers demo, um, so you can also use this image, but I don't know if you will get permission issues uh, because this I have to access this using a per personal access, right? So I have created a personal access. I need to log in. So I, I need to pull this particular image, right? So in order to pull that image, I need to log into that particular container registry. So here in this case, it's called docker.package.github.com. So I'll just say podman login and then the registry name. So generally what we do is we do docker login and then your registry URL. Most of the time it's artifactory or your docker hub or maybe Quay, right? Here I'm using the GitHub uh, container registry. So I'm using the docker.pkg.github.com. And my username is moving to web that's my github username with which i code and also the password is going to be my personal access token let me enter that so once i enter my token i get a login succeeded message so let me clear it and pull the command to pull this image right so let me copy this command so i need to pull that image just to verify if this is good right so but instead of docker i need to run podman so i'm just going to say podman pull my image from the github container registry and the version 2 because that's the latest version i wanted and notice that it's automatically pulling everything if i had not logged into this particular repository i wouldn't have been able to download this image so now that i'm able to download the image i'll just do a clear i'll just say podman images I can see the new image here see that uh, the version 2 tag got cached here notice how i am typing docker very often because i got used to typing docker you can create an alias for docker equal to podman as well but i'm not just for this particular demo i'm not going to do that so i need to run this particular image right so i'm going to do the uh, usual run so podman run i want to run this as daemon so i'm just going to say dt i also want um, the port to be exposed uh, i want the 8080 port uh, that's where um, my spring boot application is going to run so this particular image the container demo is nothing but a spring boot image which is just exposing a actuator endpoint so i'm just going to run that uh, now i can give my image name right container what is the name of it containers hyphen demo and version 2 that's it so i'm just running this particular image with the port number 8080 and also in the current machine the linux machine i'm exposing my 8080 port and inside the container i have the 8080 port mapped to it so that's what this means now let me run this as a daemon so since it is running as a daemon i want to see the logs right i want to see podman logs F. so i'll just say podman ps get the container id and i'll just say podman logs hyphen f and then paste this so if you notice uh, the container um, has got started and this is the spring boot application you can see the spring banner so i'll come out of the logs since i want to verify if this application is up i'll do a curl i'll do it to curl http local host 8080 slash actuator slash info so actuator slash health okay info will not return anything i'll just do a health so actuator health should return me if the application is up or not so if you see here it has returned me status equal to up so this could verify that my container is running now let me stop or kill the container now let me kill this particular container by doing podman ps and i got the container id from there i should do a podman kill So this will kill my Spring Boot application. Now, if I do a curl, right, this should fail. Yeah, you can see that. Now, if I run the Podman uh, as a daemon and run it again, let me check the logs. If the if the log shows that I, I my application is up, then I'll do a curl again and then show you. So if I do a hyphen L, it will get me my latest uh, container. So yeah, the application is running. I'll do a clear. Now I will do a HTTP curl actuator health this should give me status up so this is how you can run an existing image which i built like uh, seven eight months ago nine months ago 
nine, I think it's almost a year ago, right? So I'm able to use an existing Docker image and run it inside Podman. I can do the same by building a new Docker image or a new image using Podman and run it inside a Docker instance. I would suggest you to try that. If I show that, it will be the, almost the same, but I would want you to build a image using Podman and then run it inside Docker and then see how compatible it is. Just to summarize what we discussed in this particular video, Podman is a daemonless container engine, which you can leverage to create a OCI compatible container image. The same image can be run inside Podman or inside Docker. Podman can be run as rootless or even in root. You can group multiple containers within Podman. I did not show that particular feature, but you can definitely do it. If you want me to show that, do let me know in the comment section below. I can definitely try. The other good thing is Podman is daemonless. You don't have to run it as a background process. Then we installed Podman in an EC2 instance because Podman supports Linux right now. We installed Podman, we ran a sample container and we and also we connected to a GitHub package registry, pulled my existing image, which was already built long ago, ran that inside the EC2 instance, which was a Spring Boot application. And we verified that we are able to run that application. So that summarizes what we just discussed or saw in this particular video. Do try out Podman. It's an open source product. I think it has the potential to be the new Docker. Do try it out and then let me know how it was and what do you think of Podman. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.